What makes you so sure of yourself? This gun in my hand. Falk Zildjian, inestimable hero by virtue of the fact that he carries a gun, races up the steps of an apartment building. What's going on here? Who's firing? Hey, you're Falk Zildjian, aren't you? It's a cowboy show on the TV. But nothing to worry about. I could have sworn those were real gunshots. Could you turn it off for a minute? Sure. There it is. Where's that coming from? Oh, I was just firing out the window into the sky. Kind of a celebratory thing. You really shouldn't do that. You might accidentally hit someone in an apartment above you leaning out their window to fire in celebration at that same moment. Gosh, I never thought of that. Don't worry, it's just blanks this time. Stop. Please, there might be a robbery or a crime happening nearby. Give me a minute to listen for criminal gunshots. Oh, all right. That wasn't you this time? No? You're not remotely triggering gunfire in a building two blocks away? No, honest, but that's a fun idea. Fine, I'm off to investigate. Are you going to fly out the window? Word on the street is you can fly. You need to find a more reliable word on the street. For two hours, Falk crisscrosses the neighborhood known as Hex Pantry. Whoever made that noise has disappeared. Ah, what's the use? Maybe it was just a car backfiring. Talking to yourself again, Falk. Who else is there worth talking to, shoeshine man? You haven't given me any actionable information in months. Hey, don't forget you're supposed to meet Petro Wojohowicz at the coffee shop in five minutes. How did you know that? I still know a few words on the street. Falk, over here. Thanks for meeting me, Petra. I already ordered a decaf Earl Grey for you. How did you know? Everybody in Parabellum City knows things before me. Well, you don't get to be county clerk and registrar of deeds without knowing what's going on. Now, when you feel comfortable enough, you can tell me what's going on with you. I hope this isn't going to be too heavy, but I need to confide in someone. No, go ahead. Spill. I'm sorry, that sounds flippant. What is it? It's just, everything feels wrong lately. I feel like my work doesn't matter anymore. I don't know who I am. What am I doing? What should I be doing? What have I accomplished? I'm trying to be a good guy. Of course. What does that even mean? Most of the good guys I know are delusional, like Thugosh or the Phantasm, or they're screw-ups like the Emerald Ash Borer. I heard him talking to Castro the other day. Was his theme song playing when you heard him? Yeah. Good, then people listening to us will understand he isn't in the room with us right now. You're just describing a memory. Are people listening to us? I mean, realistically, no. Anyway, I heard the Emerald Ash Borer say... Hurry, Castro. We're out to smash a fraudulent vanity publishing racket. Instead of that, how about if we smash redlining? Is that a new method for ingesting narcotics? No, it's when bankers and realtors refuse to sell homes in certain neighborhoods to racial or ethnic minorities. They draw red lines on a map where they want to keep areas segregated. That's unconscionable. Can we smash that racket within 28 minutes? No, it'll take years, but the sooner we- We're out to smash a fraudulent vanity publishing racket. I think Castro pulls him in the right direction once in a while. Meanwhile, I run around getting twerps thrown in jail for counterfeiting skee-ball tickets. Or rigging a radio quiz show. <laughs> right. I go after Regina, the queen pin of crime, and I almost get killed. She isn't even a national-level villain. She's just the leader of the underworld in the tri-state area. To be fair, she has been making forays to the east and north into the penta-state area. She has a few irons in the fire, from what I hear around the water cooler. Once again, your word on the street is better than mine. I didn't know she was expanding. She's under constant pressure from competitors. For every goon you take down, two more spring up to take his place, or her place. The next biggest operator in the area horning in on Regina's territory is also a woman. You mean Ma'am E? No, this new lady got her start breeding racehorses and fixing races. Calls herself Ma Roan, except she's Greek or Basque or something, so she rolls her R's. Ma Roan. See, when I hear about new villains, there's still a part of me that wants to foil their plans, but that part of me is getting quieter. Mainly, I just want to get out of this life. It's exhausting. Crime keeps rolling no matter what I do. That's awful. I'd hate for you to give up crime fighting and maybe fall in with the wrong crowd and rise through the ranks of the underworld to become Regina's most trusted lieutenant. The way she would use you. 
the things she would do to you. You know, I even heard about Regina's plan to control the media, but it doesn't interest me. You don't say. Yeah, she bought the Daily Parabellum Media Group two years ago. There's the newspaper and uh, magazine and radio stations. Her shell corporation just acquired 1310 AM WPBC. She's been dictating the editorial direction at these outlets for months. No. She's convincing the public that competitors like the Sentinel are made up of dangerous radicals who plan to harm the country. When she gives the signal, they'll tell readers and listeners to march on City Hall and the state capitol. She's planning a takeover. If you know about it, why haven't you moved against her? I mean, how are you planning to stop her? Ah, she's spinning her wheels. She thinks she'll make citizens bust their way into City Hall, but there just aren't that many fools or traitors around. You might be surprised. They'll see themselves as patriots, and they'll think everybody else is a traitor. Just like when someone picks up a gun and thinks it makes him the hero of his story no matter how he uses it. Anyway, putting together a conglomerate of newspapers and radio stations is still legal. Are you going after Randolph Hearst or Henry Luce for their national media empires? Or are you working your way up from small potatoes like Regina? It may be legal, but she's warping the minds of thousands of readers. Millions of readers, I imagine. Do you really think a news rag can convince people to rise up and storm the Capitol building? Or install Regina as governor or president? I'm worried about that possibility. Or I used to be until this, whatever this is, it came over me. Now I don't know why I bother. I'm just a glorified cop. <laughs> Without the glory or the legal sanction, technically I'm breaking the law as a vigilante. I don't have a uniform or costume or logo, just a shirt and tie, an overcoat and a pistol. I can put you in touch with a guy who can develop a logo for you. Pretty reasonable. Am I even doing the right thing by turning criminals over to the cops? The law in this town ranges from bad Coppowitz to Wurzheimer. I just don't know what I'm doing or why I do it. You're not alone. I sit there in the county building pushing papers and filing deeds. I feel like I'm doing nothing useful. It feels like a waste or actively harmful sometimes. I feel like a criminal. Like, no. I'm Regina. You're not like that. Like I'm the queen of the underworld. I could be inventing a super efficient fuel system or curing astigmatism. You know, before I went to the Muncie College of Business Administration, I spent the summer with my aunt who taught me to make clay masks from river mud. I can throw a pot on a potter's wheel. It's not as easy as it looks. You're talking to the wrong guy if you want to pep talk about staying the course. That's what I was hoping to get from you. How's your drinks tasting? Do you folks need anything else? Nothing for me. Can I get a matcha green tea with chocolate bobas? Uh, no, probably not. I was planning to take your order and bring whatever you asked for, but suddenly I don't see the point. How does this job make society better? I'm going back to Potterville and ask Bot to run away with me. That guy who walked in, is that the Emerald Ash Borer? I'm so sorry, everybody. Castro made a new formula for my gas gun, and I just used it on some ne'er-do-wells down the street, uh, a little upwind from here. It turns out the existential crisis-inducing gas affects a larger area than we thought. Totally harmless. The villains we've tested on so far have reported very few permanent side effects. I'm just gonna prop this front door open so you get some fresh air. Should wear off in a minute or two, I guess. How do we know if our feelings of hopelessness were genuine or just gas? Sorry, Falk. My break is almost over. I gotta get back to the grind. You know, record keeping does have some value. When two people disagree about a fence or a tree being over their property line, they could waste time and money in court, but we can settle it in a minute if we have the deed and survey filed properly. Absolutely. You are doing important work. So am I. What do you tell a kid who turns in a long roll of skee-ball tickets and can't trade it for a cheap stuffed dog because all the prizes have been purchased with fake tickets? What do you tell the poor arcade operator? What the hell was that? Did that sound more like a giant mammal or a giant reptile to you? I didn't quite hear... Oh yeah, that sounds squamous. Maybe batrachian. Sorry, I mean reptile or amphibian. For a business school, the biology classes are pretty good at Old Muncie. Let's do this again next week, if we survive. I'd like that. <sighs> Whatever that is, I'm going to try and stop it. I'll probably die, but I feel good about my lifestyle choice again. Maybe I can save one or two people if I can distract the thing. Try not to. Die. I mean... Try not to die. If you 
you haven't been tuning to Parabellum City's Drama 1310 AM on Friday evenings. You've been missing WPBC's hardest detectives, Doberman and Collie. <laughs> Collie, I saw the purple around the corner of that building on the left. Hey, baby, you don't have to tell me twice. You just stay on his tail. I'll circle around the back. Right. <laughs> hey, man, keep that Doberman off me. I'll talk. I'm Doberman, he's Kali. You'd think people would be able to tell us apart. I'll give him something to remember who's who. No! <laughs> Sergeant Avalish, what do you got against Doberman and Kali? Look, Commissioner, their police work is phenomenal. No one on the Homicide Squad has a better clearance rate. Then what's your problem? There's always these barking sounds when they're around. And then they start talking, and the barking gets quiet. It sounds like when you're listening to someone speak a foreign language on TV or radio, and then the translator's voice drowns it out. I think we're hearing a translation of the barking of Doberman and Kali. I can't tell for sure, but my gut tells me those two might be actual dogs. <laughs> Hi, Doby. When does your shift end? It doesn't. I bet you could make a breakthrough on the Delacroix case if you just relax and get rid of some of that tension. Come out for a few drinks with me and Wersheimer. Look, Joyce Lynn, I don't want to get involved with a colleague. I respect the work you do and You know I what, Doberman? I know you're married to your job, but this job is a bee sting and you deserve each other. What do you mean, bee sting? It's a minced oath. Forget it. <laughs> I don't know, Abolish. I thought the barking was some kind of interstitial music. Yeah, no, Commissioner, or like a transitional sound. The way they use Donk Donk on Law & Order. What's the other show where they do that? They do a black and white freeze frame along with some unique sound just before every commercial. It's NCIS, or the one with Marg Helgenberger. Hey, man, we better get back to the commercial. Yeah, yeah, maybe we can team up for a show where we rag on police procedurals. I'd like that. <laughs> huh? Anyway, what were you saying about Doberman and Kali? How can you not tell if they're human beings? It's not a visual medium. My gut says they're dogs. I don't care if they're chinchillas. You need cases cleared off the board and those two can do it. Give them back their guns and badges and put them on the Delacroix case. Fine, but I'm hiring two new cleaning staff for homicide, and you're gonna approve it. They're too big for me to rub their noses in it, Commissioner. <laughs> Doberman and Collie. Good cop, bad dog. Bad, bad dog. Parabellum City's Drama, 1310 AM, WPBC. Fridays at 10, 9 Central. Followed by Cop Out with the Commissioner Navalish. The Long Dark Night Vision Scope of the Soul, episode 17 of This Gun in My Hand, was cited in by Rob Northrup. Visit thisgunandmyhand.blogspot.com for credits, notes, information on how to subscribe, and to buy my books such as Little Heist in the Big Woods and other revisionist atrocities. Who says, This Gun in My Hand.